go forth and break the bread of your word. We're so grateful, Lord God. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Speak to your people, Lord God. Lord, we come against the spirit of distraction, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, for focus today. Lord God, we declare and I declare and I come and agree with, with you, Lord God, that our hearts are, are good ground for the seed of the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you know, and let me try to move and see if this works out. You guys, I'm in my basement here. So, <laughs> until we get things going here, you know, so excuse the background here. And so, I hope this is a better picture here. And so, um, um, we have been in a series um, called, you have a, a right to be on top. You have a right to be on top. And I pray that you have been blessed by this series. Amen. And so, God has been doing great things with that. The Lord has been doing with me about certain things that he wants me to go ahead and um, start doing some other things. And, and, and so, that means probably another round of the Christian Bill of Rights starting at point one. And he wants me to do some things with that. And I'm super excited. I got into prayer. And, and, and how many know that prayer works? And, 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 and to, in order to be on top, you got, guess what, guess what, guess what? You've got to be in love with God of the mountain because if you go there expecting to see fame and fortune, guess what? You're going to stay in the valley. But guess what? When you're drawn to the God of the top, guess what? You'll draw because you're not even looking to be on top. You're looking for him. And because he's on top, you'll end up there. Right, the, the word of God says that we that, 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 that we live with him in heavenly places far above principalities and, and, and demons and all kinds of other things far above that. We live with him now. Our stance, our position of authority, guess what is in what? Heavenly places. Amen. And so so I'm super excited about that. And so um, 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 and so guess what now? So you're here pursuing God. And because of that, you with him, you are drawn to top because he's at the top. Amen. So guess what? Before we get started, I want you to share and subscribe. Share and subscribe. It's easy to click on the button. Uh, um, share and subscribe should be at the bottom over here, um, Akil. And so I know he's got that. And just easily click on that button, share and subscribe. And I know that he's working on the button to be able to give, you know, to give, you know. And, and so, you know, and, 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 and what's going on? And, and so giving, and guess what? And so we give, and so we will begin to give for Promise Land Ministries. And so we're giving to guess what? Oh my God, we got we got a house full of people here. So my apologies here. So Givelify, guess what? We're going to use Givelify to give. And guess what? When you look at Givelify, you're going to see Promise Land Ministries Incorporated in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Amen. Promise Land Ministries Incorporated in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Right. And so you're going to be able to give. Right. And then so guess what? You're giving the guys a form. We already already know that. And guess what? Volunteer. Spend your time volunteering. We've got a revival coming up, and I'll um um. Um, as I, I already have the flyer, so I'll go ahead and present those on Sunday. So we've got a revival coming up. And guess what? This is about winning souls. And guess what? It goes on your account for helping to win souls when you come out to to um, um, Sykes Park and in East Point and help us minister, pray for people, um, 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 hug on people, serve them food, hey, give out gift bags. Hey, guess what? Now, when you're doing that, guess what? It, God sees it and he says you did it to me because you did it to the least of them. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into the word here again. And so you should remember, share and subscribe. And guess what? We are Article 14 of the Christian Bill of Rights. So you have a right to be on top again. Right. And, and we talked about Sunday. The Sunday title of the message is God is the source of promotion and doing it God's way. Amen. Doing it God's way. And guess what? Guess what? God's way is he doesn't want you to be on top just to just to be on top. Like Hollywood's full of people who just want to be rich, who want to be famous. They don't have a vision. Their vision is they confuse a vision with the result. I want to be rich and famous. That's my vision. That's not that's the result. You know, if I want to make music, I want to do this. That's a the vision. 
you know, to change hearts, to do this. And guess what? The result of that could be fame and fortune. But guess what? You'll tell if it's your vision or not, because guess what? If you don't get the result that you want, then you still do it. Amen. And guess what? You could tell if, 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 if your vision is something beyond you that's going to help other people out and you don't worry about the money or the pay. Guess what? That's usually God. So we talked about succeeding God's way. And when you succeed God's way, don't you understand that God, when you succeed God's way, God has a, not only a plan to get you on top, but he has a purpose for you being there. And a lot of times it's not about you buying a white car, white suit, white pajamas, a white mansion, uh, almost like a BT video. It's, <laughs> Amen. It's not, it might result in some of that, but guess what? If it doesn't, you had people that God's vision was for them to be, fit, to be fed by lions. You got people out there that God's vision for their life to be on top, on top for them is feeding hungry people in third world countries. On top in America means material things, a giant home or pretty wife. And that's when we, when, when Western people think of on top, we're thinking of something completely different than what God is saying on top to God and biblical on top. Yes, it does have some material wealth to it, but it's being favored by God. And you, and when you're favored by God, the way that you get that favor is, you, guess what? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm favored by God for on purpose and for a purpose. Amen. Your favor is on purpose, but it's for a purpose. Amen. God is not giving you something just because he's Santa Claus. And so you've got to be willing to understand that. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 75, Psalm 75 verse 6. And we talked about this Sunday. Amen. And we talked about service, but this is the foundation scripture. Let's go ahead and go there. Amen. And so it says in Psalm 75, verse 6, it says, For promotion comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another one. God does it. God puts down one. And, we, and, and guess what? The politics, we always say, you know what? Every bad person, even God put him there. And God, yeah, and you know what? Guess what? We... And guess what? We make decisions too. And, and, and sometimes we use that for a bunch of other stuff, thinking that God put folks somewhere and it's us as a nation that wants these people in. Amen? We say we want a Christian, but we don't want a real one. That guy, Jimmy Carter, was, a, was saved for real and we thought he was set, he was soft. So what happens now, God turns us over to the lust of our flesh. This is the type of leader we, we want. We see that in the Bible. We talked about Saul when they wanted to give us a king. And God said, I'm going to give you the king that you want then. And they wanted that type of king. So guess what? God gave them that type of king. God loved Saul, but God gave them the type of king they wanted. Amen. And then God said, okay, let's try it my way. Look at your neighbor and say, I've tried it my way. So let's try it God's way. So guess what? On top, you've got to understand that when you're on top or when you're praying for God to give you success, guess what? You've got to ask not only for God to do it his way, but also for his will. Look at your neighbor and say, his way, his will. And we want, we want to have God do it his way as long as we get to have our will. As long as we get to the top, we don't matter. A lot sometimes we don't matter how we get there. We'll do anything or, or suffer anything to do it. But guess what? When we get there, we don't want to do his will. Amen. Let's go. We're going to land here. Uh, um, Isaiah 58. This is what we discussed Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for focus today. Thank you, Father, for focusing that. Isaiah 58, and we're going to go to verse 1 here. And this is God telling the prophet what to do, Isaiah. He says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. Look at this. The house of Jacob and their sin. Verse 2, yet they seek me daily. Look, they say, you in sin, but you seeking me daily. You delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of your God. So you did all that. You obeyed the commandments too. 
and they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching uh, to God. Verse 3, warfare have you fasted? Say they, he said, look, we fasted. Wherefore we have fasted, haven't we? Said they, you say it. Don't you see it? Wherefore we've afflicted our soul? And you don't even see it? You don't take knowledge of it? You don't acknowledge that? Behold, in the days of your fast, you find pleasure in exact all labor. Look at that. Even though you're fasting, you're going to food, you're doing all this other stuff, you're finding pleasure in other things. And what? And, 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 and exacting all of your labors and bossing people around. Amen. You're doing all that stuff. You're speaking in tongues. You're in the choir. You 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 anti this. You anti that. You you marching. But guess what? Comes? You still hate for your neighbor. You had people back in the day that wouldn't drink wine, wouldn't drink liquor. They prayed in schools, but the schools were segregated. They didn't drink. They didn't cuss. They read the Bible. Every, generally read the Bible every day. But he was hateful to his neighbor, and that, and, and he considered that fasting. But the thing that God really wanted was mercy. Was a stuff he refused to do. And so that's what happens. Yes, dear, I'm on video. Yes. <laughs> the food is here. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> That's Pastor. This is that's my sister, you know. She was uh, she wants to make sure. So come on, say hello, Lisa. Come on, uh, come on, say hello. Hello, Lisa. Yeah, it, 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 this is our God congregation you. here. God bless you. There you Can go. they see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God they bless they you. See you. Okay. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Yeah. We come to church not just Sunday, but the next one. We come to revival day. Okay, is there anything else that you want to say to the people before uh, I mean here? Yeah. All right. God is good. Yes, it. He's amazing. He's amazing, yes. <laughs> Is there any, anything else you want to get your chest? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. I'm having, having the show. time of my life. God is so good, man. I, I kid you not. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No. All right. All right. God All right. bless you. Can we okay. continue? Yeah. Now, <laughs> you know what? This is what on top is for me because I didn't have a family like that that loved me before. And so God gave me a family that loves me and embraces me. So that's a symbol of that. Guess what? I'm not a billionaire yet, right? But guess what? My on top is different from your on top, right? And so now God gave me things that I was poor in, which is love. You saw people come down and say hello and do. And guess what? There was a time I didn't have that. Pastor Lucas didn't have that. that I was called Dr. Lucas and wherever else we're getting misused around loved ones or cussed out or something. Amen. But God is restored. He's turned my morning into dancing. So guess what? God, guess what? God, let's get your, God has a custom fit top for you. I want you to understand that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So you should don't have to be jealous of your neighbor because God has a custom made top for you. And guess what? What your definition on top is could be different from anybody else's. Amen. So there's no need to hate. Amen. So let's go ahead and get into the word again because that's what we're here. Amen. But 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 thank a lot. Thank you for allowing me to take that rabbit trail here. But but uh, Pastor Luke, I gotta keep going here. So you you look they saying you fasted, but we fa didn't you see it? Didn't you acknowledge it? Be here, behold, in the days of your fast, you found pleasure in exact labor. Verse 4, behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. And you shall not, uh, shall you not fast as you do this, uh, this day? It says, uh, ye shall not fast as you do this day, God is saying. He's saying, let me read again, verse 4. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. You can't expect to be fasting like that and then be mean as a bugger bear somewhere else and expect God to hear. And sometimes that's what happens in this nation. We get we get loud. We think we're hearing. A lot of times people on television are the least anointed people you can have. They have connections. But guess what happened now? America is not feeling the love. We blame it, liberals, we blame it, everybody else, but guess what, the, the people in the house of God who don't want that, it's been always that way, that you can, they, they will own slaves, but won't drink a drop of liquor. They will be anti this, but then have a, and take a, a, don't abort, but then I'll take a shotgun and blow your head off. 
And because, and, get, and guess what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. They are suffering uh, from their families because that, that, that spirit is choking their family. But in their pride, they're not going to tell anybody that that stuff that they're preaching ain't even working in their own house. That their children are resenting them because they hear how they talk about their neighbor on the, in the club. And then you wonder why their children are rebelling, but they're able to hide They will, but then they got nerve to talk about people in Chicago, and you got kids sleeping in, in your liquor cabinet and all kind of other stuff that's high over here in suburbia. Look at your neighbor and say, mind your business. So God is saying, and these people are not sent by God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to preach it. If these people are not sent by God. God did not send them because guess what happened now? God is balanced. He's going to talk about one and the other when they're going to have the same strength to it. People have said, that's what so they're, they're fasting. They're doing all this marching. They're, they're talking about, the, they're doing all this stuff, Supreme Court, whatever, but they're not doing it because they love folks. They're doing it for strife and debate. They're doing it so they can look down at somebody else. Only in the church do we take statistics about other races to go cram it down their throat and say, that's just facts, brother. You got to, you know. And so we think that's the only fact about somebody. We'll take the 5% that's wrong about somebody and act like that's their fact. But then when it comes to us, when you got a real prophet that's correcting you, you act like you're being killed or persecuted. So what happens now, even in ministry, you got people that's on top, but God is tired of these preachers that come and get power, and they're just as hateful as they want to be, and just as racist as they want to be. And so they're fasting. Some of these fools got books on fasting. But you're fasting, but your heart is blessed. But you're fasting, but you're hateful. But you're fasting, but you're selfish. But you're fasting, but guess what? Now you're judging your brother, and you got a you you, you got he got a speck in his eye, but you got a plank in yours. You got some folks that's on top that God's gonna set down in this season, and y'all not gonna push, y'all not gonna push sometimes. You got some folks that's playing with God, that's speaking for God, these YouTube prophets, and, 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 and they prophesy out all that stuff about Trump and whoever else, and none of that stuff happened. And we're fooling people, and you, if you go back and look at those prophecies, none of that stuff happened. God wants you to be on top. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to one, the first, the poor. And then the broken heart. He didn't tell. And guess, so guess what we're doing now as a church? We're not P-R-A-Y poor people and weak people. We, we, we're not doing. We are P-R-E-Y in them. We're praying on them. So you're fasting. That way, but you hateful to your brother. You fasting, and then you you won't let people vote. You fasting, and then when somebody get, and, and, and I've been around them. And so what happens now? That when that stuff bad happen to other groups, they they laugh, they smile. I've seen them smile like with a sick little sadistic smile on their face. Verse five here. All right, you got to go Now you introduce now the prophet Lucas now. Thank you, Lord. There is a season and a wind coming where God is going to put you on top, but for a reason, stop getting that little white Bentley in your head. You're not a stereotype. God is putting you on top for a, a geese assigning gatekeeper. He's going to start firing these counterfeits. That are speaking for him, and he never told them anything. Verse 5, it is such... Is it such a fast that I've chosen for you? But I said, you're picking a fast that, but did I really, you picking a fast I ain't even choose. A day for a man to, and then he's saying, is this the fast I want you to do, right? After he's going to keep going. A day for a man to afflict his soul and to bow down his head as a bull rush and to spread sackcloth and ashes on him. He said, is that the fast I chose for you? 
God being sarcastic. He said, I ain't even too, you didn't ask me what type of fast to do. So you're going around uh, uh, putting sackcloth and ashes on, beating yourself with whip, beating yourself with switches and stuff so everybody can see you, but you never asked me what, what type of fast. Guess what? When you're going to fast, you need to stop saying, I think I'm going to do this. And, like you have a menu. What you need to be doing is praying and asking God what you want him to, what, what should be restricted in your life and what should go out of your life and what should come in during the fast. Verse 6. It's not just the fast I've chosen for you to loose the bands of the wicked. All that stuff from verse one through five, that's what's on, that's the flesh. That's what you did. And God was disgusted by it. But he said, if you're going to fast for me, verse six says, guess what? It's not just the fast I've chosen for you to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens and to let the press go free. That you may break every yoke. Guess what now? Guess what? That's the fast that God has chosen for us in this nation. But we're doing the opposite. We're fasting, we're preaching, and we, we yeah, spare all of that. And we use that scripture. Some guy, I was in church talking about a crowd, a lot of spare not, you know. And then he said some stupid, he used God's word, but didn't have God's heart. And I had to come in here and listen to this coop preach the Bible, and it was, I, he had no fear of God. He just run his mouth. It's not this to fast I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness and to, guess what, undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and to break it. Ain't not just in one area, but in one area. If you can do the unborn, you can free up. You can free poor people too. You can let people vote. But because it's against our interest, guess what now? Because we don't want, we can walk if they vote. Everybody that's whole this is going to turn liberal. Guess what? The reason is your lady behind won't get up and evangelize nobody. So you want to bound them up. You want to save America, go evangelize it. Stop making people, stop making people do stuff. You know what I'm saying? Go change their heart. The key to, it's not a physical war now. We don't understand. It's a war of the heart. Guess what now? So God's going to put some people on top that know what they're doing. They will submit to God. Watch what God does. Watch, watch what God does. He's going to start cutting some people off. You're going to start cutting some people off, and you're going to be surprised. And guess what's going to happen now? I believe, I said, guess what? When God begins to cut, and God's going to begin to cut people off. Yeah, yeah. And when he begins to cut them off, God's going to raise up somebody quick. It's going to take like two or three days. You're going to be up, down, up. And then, and then that means we're going to go to another direction and another level. It's not going to, when God cuts these counterfeits off, God's going to put his person there. It's going to be like a blink of an eye. You're going to tune in one day, the old dude going to be preaching, and then he's going to be gone, retired or whatever else, and then the next thing they're going to have another one more anointed with the real anointing of God, in, and that's going to take off. God is not going to come. Jesus is not going to come back while you got all these counterfeits in the pulpit. He called you. If you're anointed, any person who's anointed of God never sides with power. They are there. The Holy Spirit is not there for you to kiss the kings behind or, 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 or Herod's behind. The Holy Spirit is there. Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is there to witness to the poor, to loose the bands of wickedness, the stuff you don't want to do. And now you've got too many Christian leaders now who can't stand up or who fight them. Who voting against them? You got health care, and because you sucking up the tire from people, because you don't want to get a job. But guess what? Your neighborhood needed, but you gonna vote against. But you getting it from them. Why are you hypocrite? Is it not verse seven to deal your bread to the hungry that you bring the poor to cast out uh, out to your house? Share your house with the poor. Hmm. How many of us do that? How many preachers do that? You don't want to give your cell phone number. Your house that was built with God's people's money was not for you to get some rest and hide yourself from other people and then not have another job but that. Some of you, if you wouldn't, didn't preach, you'd be starving. When you see the naked, no, don't take the offering and do what you do. When you see the naked, cover him. And don't hide yourself from your own flesh. I don't know why I'm going here with leadership, but you need to stop hiding yourself from your members. 
But other folks that don't even look like you, you get in, you kiss their behind, and then they get all access to you. Because all of a sudden now, you don't went from the projects to being somebody. And the people that God used to put you like Pharaoh, and you, you, God, you, you, off the backs of the anointing of God's people, you built these monuments, then you're going to turn around and put your face on top of it like you did. And then guess what? Nobody can eat with it but you. That's a pharaonical spirit. Verse 8. Then shall your light break forth as the morning, and the health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall be. Look at your neighbor and say, be encouraged. God sees what you're doing. God sees that you're giving. God sees that you're doing it when you're sick. God sees it when you're doing it when you're broke. When you got folks that's got plenty of money that drive right by, that's got their health. God, look at your neighbor and say, prophetically, God is coming to deliver you and to heal you because he sees what you're doing. He sees it. I didn't even I didn't even mean this to be a prophetic. This is the Holy Spirit. There is a season coming now where God is going to rain down on top in promotions, and He's going to shift power. He is literally going to set one down and put, it's going to be just like that, and put up another one. And guess what? When God puts you there, don't be moved by the faces or the comments because folks who don't think you're qualified, the reason why is because your heart convicts them. Be bold, but not mean. Be bold and confident, but trust God. Lean on God. Take away one. Be faithful where you're planning. You should have written it down. Be faithful where you're planning. This is important now. I am prepared. This is, I told you, this, I believe prophetically now, this is for the future you. Be faithful where you're planted. What does that mean? When God begins to bless you, our tendency is now that we don't have time to do what we were doing before and be showing up for the revival, showing up for church, because guess what now? You've got to clean your house now. You, you're going out to eat every day and you're tired. You're in class at Boaz now, but don't have time for nothing else. God bless you with this and this, because you you so you running around spending the money. Don't you use God is not some cheap date where you can use him and when you get what you want, you too, you don't have time for anything else. It's disgusting. You got plenty of people now who want the blessing of God, but the presence of God to them is a burden. It's a nuisance, and no, it's something obligation. Amen. Be faithful where you're planted. Psalm 92. Faithful don't mean just showing up. Faithful means showing up with your full attention. Faithful means serving where you are with a good attitude. Amen. You want to be there. Amen. Psalm 92 verse 13 through 15 says, Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Verse 15, to show that God is upright and he is at my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Guess what now? When you're faithful, God rewards it. But you, faithfulness don't just mean doing the work. It means doing it with a good attitude with your heart. You ser God, Serving is a God, a heart thing. But God, what does that have to be to do with being on top? Because God will test your heart with every promotion. Look at your neighbor and say, when there's a promotion, before promotion... Comes a trial. Take away two. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient doesn't mean wait. Be patient means be consistent where you are. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 5. Turn there, turn there, turn there. Try, get the faith. Every time I go to a scripture, try to turn there. Amen. Why? Because guess what now? When you do that, it's teaching you biblical literacy. Teaching biblical literacy. Amen. It's okay to stumble around and look at the table of contents because eventually in a few years, you're going to be like, oh, that's James. James is by Hebrew. That's how I learned. Amen. James chapter one, verses two through five. Write it down if you don't already have it. Be patient. Just take away two. James chapter one, verse two through five. And the killing and Dr. Try to get this on that. I know you've got it posted there and they get this hit on the video. And it's a great job. I love the way that's down at that bottom right screen. It's amazing. James chapter one, verse two through five says this. My brethren. 
Count it all joy when you fall into different or diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith works what? Patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. What does that have to do with being on top and doing it God's way? Guess what? Guess what? Saul, yes, it was divine God's way. But guess what? Now, Saul got to be king in one day. He was mentored by Samuel, but he was anointed that day. And, and became king that day. David was anointed, and it took him 13 years into the throne. God prepared him. So when he was able, when he was, and when he was there, he was disciplined enough. And even, even though he failed, he, he trusted God enough, and he had enough of a strong relationship to where, guess what now? When he got it, he could keep it through Christ. Abraham waited for 25 years for the promise of a son. But he wasn't waiting. God was developing his faith along the way. God was developing the infrastructure for a nation. He was victories and wealth. And so when the child came, who was going to be his in, in his heir, guess what? All the things were in the way to keep that going for generations even up to now. I mean, be patient because guess what? God is working behind the scenes. Guess what? And guess what? And we talked about last, we talked about on Sunday, God can bring what he's, he can put you on top tomorrow. But that's not the problem. It takes to, but it takes years to prepare you for the mountain that's already created. You better tell me. It takes God years to prepare you for the mountain that's already waiting on you. Amen. The Bible says this. The Bible says this, that the children of Israel uh, uh, could have went from Egypt to the promised land in 11 days. But guess what? It took 40 years to prepare them for warfare and to prepare other things. Guess what now? What do you do when your blessing is ready, but you're not? You better tell me something. What do you do when your, your blessing is arms reach, but you can't have it right now? The Bible says, guess what it says now, that guess what now, that, that the heir, even though he, uh, the child, even though he's an heir, guess what, can't he get the inheritance right now, he's got to be under tutors to what, to guess what, to he mature, Galatians says that, 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 the heir, that, 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 guess what, the child is an heir, he has a right to certain things, but he's got to grow up so he can handle it, take away three, because I, I'm excited now, take away three, all right, we're almost done here. Take away three. Be flexible on how God will promote you. Be flex. Look at your name. Be flexible on how God will promote you. We talked about it God's way. Psalm 66, 11 through 12. I want you. To, I want to read this. Psalm. Turn to Psalm 66, and we're going to go to verse 11 and 12. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. Amen. And guess what? If if it's going too fast, go ahead and rewind this. Amen. Psalm 66, verse 11 through 12 here. Be flexible on how God will promote you. Write it down here. Verse 11 says this. He says, thou has brought us or you have brought us into the net. You have laid a fix on our loins. That sound like God. Oh, my God. He said God did it. God brought them into a net and laid affliction on their loins or put affliction in their lap. Right. Verse 12. And you caused men to ride on our heads. And we went through fire and through water, but you brought us into a wealthy place. Why would God do that? Because God is trying to show you that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He's trying to show you that he's faithful. He's trying to show you and get the fear out of you. So when you get to be on top of the promised land and there's giants around, you won't bleep because you have already seen the Amalekites. You've seen the Hittites. You've seen the Jebusites. You've seen all kinds. You've seen Pharaoh drown. And guess what? God's going to use that so that when you get there, it settles. You look at your neighbor and say, your experience settles you. Amen. And guess what we talked about Sunday? God is not going to allow you to be on top without a testimony. God needs when you get on top to be able to shout out his goodness, shout out his faithfulness, shout out your story. So God is developing that testimony. So when you're on top, look at your neighbor and say platform. I'm being on top is a platform. Amen. Take away four. You should be writing this down. Amen. Take away four. Be grateful, but not settled. Be grateful, but not settled. Be grateful, but not settled. Amen. Be grateful, but not settled. Take away four. Be grateful, but not settled. Amen. That's Philippians chapter four. Write it down. Be grateful, but not settled. Uh, write it down, Paul. 
<laughs> write it down, Kyrie. Write it down, Keisha. Sergeant, and get some rest, but you write it down later on. You know I love you. Write it down, Gina and, and Tay. All right, write it down, Mark. Mark on. Douglas, write it down. Kevin, you probably drive me, but write it down when you get that on. I know you oh, 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 nothing. Write it down, Dondre. Get that homework out and write it down. Be careful, but not, be grateful, but not self. Philippians chapter 4, 12 through 13. Lisa, write it down since you're up there. Mama, write it down. I can't boss mama around, though. Lisa, write it down. Philippians chapter 4, verse. Lisa McQuaid, write it down. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 says this. I know how to be a base, or I know how to be poor. I know how to be humble, and I know how to abound. I know how to be rich. I know how to be poor. I know how to be rich, right? Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. This Apostle Paul talking, both to abound or to or to have plenty and to suffer need. Guess what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In this context, he's talking about being content in all things, but not settled in all things. Guess what? You be content because guess what? God has you in the city. It might take a little while because he needs to develop some things in you. Amen. Being on top. Guess what? I already told you that I, I looked at I looked at all versions of the Bible. I could not find a Disney trans translation of the Bible. This is not a magic book. It is a cookbook. It's a book full of promises. There's look at your neighbor and say there's God's part and there's your part. There's God's timing and that's you being patient. Yes, amen. Take away five. Take away. We're gonna land here. Take away five. Be bold. Have bold faith. Hallelujah. Be bold. Guess what that means? Get be, be excited about what God's doing. Have faith. Amen. Seek God's word. And no matter what you see, the Bible says, what well, we walk by faith and not by what sight. Guess what? You're walking by your imagination. You can see what God says. And guess what? You're placing your joy not on your external circumstances, but on what God said. The Bible says, fight the good fight of what? Faith. Philippians chapter 4 and 13. And we already talked about that before, but we're going to land here. We're going to land here and turn to your book to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. And we're going to end here. Hebrews 11 and 6. Right before James in the New Testament, it says, for, guess what? It is impossible to please God without what? Faith, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that do diligently seek him. Yes, you diligently seek but guess what? You're seeking him with the word in mind. You're seeking him, boldly proclaiming what he said. Amen. And guess what? When you have a desire for God and God puts something in your heart to help other people or to get your family out of poverty or to do other things, guess what? The reason why you're afraid of it is because guess what? You are trying to, you're thinking in your own human effort. If God gave you a vision, it's going to take God to get it done. God doesn't want you accomplishing stuff without him because you'll go back and say you did it and then try to sell some books on five with keys to success. And God won't be nowhere in there. He'll be an afterthought, but you're going to be the keynote speaker. Oh, I did this and I, 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 I did this and I paid this and I did. And this is why. Amen. And so you're still in God's glory and taking his platform so people can just hear you be smart. God's not going to have it. So guess what? God will look at your neighbor and say, God will stretch you. Guess what? So there's room for him to get it. God will leave gaps in your ability. So it's going to take his long arms to get you there. Amen. I thank you, Holy Spirit. The children of Israel marched and ran from Pharaoh and got to the Red Sea, and they could go no far, no further, and God allowed it. So guess what? He's not going to let them walk away or ride a boat on their own uh, volition to on the Red Sea. Why? Because they would have been talking about God. I, God didn't do that. We did it. So guess what? There's going to come a time when you have bold faith, and bold faith is when you have come to the end of yourself and, and end of yourself, end of your human effort now, but you still believe. Tell your neighbor, I'm tired, but I still believe. I'm broke, but I still believe. I'm hurting, but I still believe. They laid me off, but I still believe. They lied on me, but I still believe. My bank account's looking funny, but I still believe. My kids cussed me out yesterday, but I still believe. And in that still belief is where God fits in now and opens up the Red Sea. 
It's supposed to be impossible. It's supposed to be embarrassing. It's supposed to be when the chips are down. It's a, you're supposed to go to the 12th round and need a knockout so that God can open the Red Sea so that you and your haters will know that there's a God in the earth. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? It's time to stop playing. You don't want to miss out on what God said. I was praying. I was going to go and I was going to our facility to preach Sunday. And the Lord just, he started talking to me about the revival. And he said, you know what? Yeah. And he was just showing me that I was preparing people for heaven. Yes. Amen. But God said he's got good things on earth. And I saw these supernatural birth certificates as people were giving their life to Christ. God was issuing out these beautiful gold trim birth certificates with their name on it but guess what other things were written on it benefits and bless god's got blessings ahead for you when you get god said tell my people he was he was impressing me to tell his people that guess what when you get saved god has plans for your life here on earth he's got good things ready for you on your spiritual birth certificate, he's got plans. He's got social set aside. He's got a wife. He's got John. He's got, he's got, he's still in the blessing business here on earth. Amen. So you want to be a part of that of what God has. And what does that trigger? Well, how does that get triggered of you being on top? Guess what? Receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And guess what? The Bible calls it being born again. And when you do that, the birth certificate from heaven comes out. And with that, there's, there's orders. Angelic God is giving angels and giving them charge to open up doors for you that you can't open up to bless you. Why would he bless me and I've sinned and I just said the prayer? Why? To encourage you that you did the right thing. Amen. You struggling for no reason. The devil got you struggling because he's terrified that you're going to say this prayer. He, well, he's kind of convinced you that this prayer ain't going to work. It ain't real because he hates you even if you're serving him. The devil hates his own angels. Repeat after me. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord. And guess what? If you're backslidden, you need to pray this prayer like it's the first time you prayed it to. Amen. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you. As a sinner, forgive me for my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make me a new person. And Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Guess what? If you said that prayer, it's a faith. You don't have to feel anything. That's that's bold faith acting right there. Bold faith says, I don't have to see it. I don't have to feel it. But guess what? I believe God's word. And guess what? When you did that, God just issued you. You are The Bible says he who is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. The whole, all things have become new. Guess what? That spiritual birth certificate that the Lord showed me has come down. An angel has grabbed that. That birth certificate, hallelujah, is issued with orders to bless you down. Angelic orders to bless you. The Bible says this, that angels in heaven rejoice over one soul who repents. They're rejoicing. They're having a party over you right now. And someone God has sent an angelic host by what orders to bless you in the position you amen. I need you to do another favor for me. I need you to get yourself a Bible, invest in a good Bible. And also, I'd love to be your pastor. I'd like, love for you to join Promise and Ministries and come see us at our facility at 105 Technology Parkway. In Peachtree Corners, Georgia, 30092. Join us at 11 a.m. on Sundays. We'd love to have you. I'd love to be your pastor. Amen. I would love, I would love you. And I'm a hands on pastor. Amen. And also, you know, yes, church attendance and also attend the broadcast as when you can. Broadcast at 11 um, a.m. on Sunday, every Sunday morning, and 7 p.m. for the Bible study. Amen. Tell your friends. Amen. I love you. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pray so you can, and, and, and we're going to see you Sunday. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the sheep, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. And we come in agreement, Lord God, even for the people in the school shooting, Lord God. We just ask you for peace for them, Lord God. And resolution, I govern. I bind the spirit of religion. I bind satanic forces, Lord. Father God, send people, set down the ones that are scared and, 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 and send the people that are fear you, Lord God, that are going to close these demonic doors, Lord God. 
Send people who are focused on you, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for peace for the congregation and safety, Lord God, and promotion in Jesus Christ's name. I pray. Amen. Hey, look, this is your pastor, Dr. Charles C. Lucas, Senior Pastor, Promise and Ministry, saying, keep moving.